So what exactly is medical malpractice? Today, we're gonna answer four common questions healthcare professionals have on this topic so that you can know what's expected of you, the potential risks, and how you can protect yourself. Welcome to Malpractice Insights, the show dedicated to helping healthcare professionals understand medical malpractice insurance and providing you with solutions so that you can get back to the work of practicing good medicine. My name is Jennifer Wiggins, CEO of Aegis Malpractice Solutions, and I'm so glad you've joined us today. If you're new to our channel, welcome. We release a new episode every week, both on our YouTube and on a podcast, so you can listen to us on your favorite streaming service. Be sure to like and subscribe and stay connected. Just a quick reminder though, before we jump in, we're here to provide general information on medical malpractice insurance and related topics, not specific legal or insurance advice. So if you have questions about your practice or individual coverage needs, be sure to talk to your agent or legal advisor or contact us at aegismalpractice.com. That's A-E-G-I-S, malpractice.com. We'd be happy to help. Now, I've talked to hundreds of medical providers over the years. We've presented to medical students, residents, fellows, and work with established practitioners, and understanding medical malpractice is still something that so many people struggle with. So today, we're gonna kick off our journey in helping you become a malpractice insurance expert. So let's get to it. Question number one, what exactly is medical malpractice? Medical malpractice is professional negligence by a healthcare provider that deviates from the accepted standard of care, which results in harm. Medical professional liability insurance, also known as medical malpractice insurance or MedMal, provides coverage to physicians, surgeons, and other healthcare professionals for the liability that arises from a medical malpractice claim. In simple terms, it protects doctors and healthcare providers against the claims filed by patients or their families who sue them, alleging harm by their negligent or harmful treatment. Healthcare professionals are not expected to be perfect. None of us are. But they are, however, required to meet the appropriate standard of care, which is what a reasonably competent or skilled provider with similar background and training would have done in the same situation. But in order to prove that the standard of care either was or was not met, attorneys on both sides may bring in an expert witness to testify. So if, for example, a radiologist's actions are being questioned, another radiologist or a specialist in that given field may testify to show that the doctor either failed to do something that he should have done or that he did something that he should not have done. The second question that we often get is, What does a patient actually need to prove in order to win a malpractice case against a doctor? A plaintiff alleging medical malpractice must prove the following four things. First, a duty of care was owed by the healthcare provider to the patient. So for our radiologist, there had to have been a duty for him to review that x-ray or that scan or render that service for the patient. Second, the duty had to have been breached. So the standard of care wasn't met. So either the breast cancer was missed in the scan, there was a misdiagnosis, or something happened that breached that standard of care. Third, the breach has to have caused an injury. And fourth, that injury has to have resulted in damages to the patient. The burden of proof really does lie with the plaintiff in a malpractice lawsuit, and all four elements must be proven for a case to win at trial. Physicians, dentists, nurses, and healthcare professionals owe a duty of care to those who seek their treatment. This element of proof is rarely disputed in medical malpractice cases because once a provider has agreed to treat a patient, he or she has a professional duty to provide competent care. More importantly, the patient must show that there was a real injury, either physical or emotional, as a result of the alleged negligence. Causation is arguably the most critical part of establishing proof in a medical malpractice lawsuit. While there may be injuries, if those injuries cannot be directly linked to the healthcare provider's action or lack of action, then there's no case. There are several issues that can make causation difficult to prove in a medical malpractice case. Here are some examples. 
trying to separate the effect of an existing condition from the effect of the negligent medical treatment. So did the doctor's treatment actually cause the injury or maybe was the injury already there? Second, predicting if the outcome would have been the same regardless of the provider's actions. Let's say a patient was treated for stomach pain, went to the ER, and then was discharged, but later died at home of a stroke. Third, there could be multiple factors contributing to that particular injury. So can it be directly connected to the provider's care? That has to be proven. If all four elements are proven, duty, breach, cause, and damages, and the jury finds in favor of the plaintiff, then a payment is made to indemnify the patient for their losses. The third question that we get is about those losses. So how do the courts even determine how much a patient can recover in a malpractice case? There are two types of damages in a malpractice case, compensatory and punitive. Compensatory damages can either be economic or non-economic. Economic damages are what we've all heard before, so it's loss of income, medical expenses, and the cost of future medical care if the patient would need ongoing treatment or ongoing care. The non-economic damages would be, for example, pain and suffering, the loss of of an organ or a limb, the reduced enjoyment in life. So establishing the amount of damages can be somewhat difficult, and some of these items don't have a direct cost tied to them. So for example, if someone was an avid marathon runner and then had an injury to their knee or ankle that no longer allowed them to enjoy that hobby, the courts have to determine how much is that worth. The other type of damages in a med mal case are punitive damages. Now, punitive damages are only awarded if a healthcare provider's conduct is found to be intentionally harmful or reckless. We don't see a lot of these in med mal cases, but it is important for you to know that punitive damages by nature are intended to punish the provider. So your malpractice insurance will not cover these. It also will not cover any liability that arises from sexual misconduct, from criminal acts, or inappropriate alteration of patient medical records. And question number four, so what can I do to protect myself? Two big things for you to walk away with today. First, make sure you have appropriate malpractice insurance coverage. If you're not sure that you have the right kind of coverage, or if you have questions on what your policy does and doesn't cover, just be sure that you talk to your agent and make changes where necessary. Number two, Take advantage of risk management education and services that are provided by your insurance carrier. Almost all of the big national insurance carriers offer free risk management courses. They might even give you a premium discount if you take their course. Some actually will even give you CME credits, so it's definitely worth looking into. If you have any questions on this topic or you want to make sure that you're covered appropriately, click the link in the description box below where you can connect with us today by phone or email or chat. And if you're listening, please visit us at aegismalpractice.com. That's A-E-G-I-S malpractice.com. So what other topics would you like us to cover here on Malpractice Insights? Please drop us a comment and just let us know. And if you found this information helpful, give us a like or a review. We'd love to hear from you today. And be sure to subscribe to our show so that you can catch our next installment of Malpractice Insights where we're dedicated to helping you understand medical malpractice insurance and providing you with the solutions you need so that you can get back to the work of practicing good medicine. This is Jennifer Wiggins. Thanks so much for joining us.